Hi and welcome back everybody, this is the Forever Finalist, Josh Dunkerley, and today I will be uh, going over how to paint this Poxwalker skin in the same skin color as the Obliterator, because that Obliterator video, um, as much as I spent a lot of time making it, ended up being very um, skippy, and I have adjusted the video settings, you can see it moves much better now so I'm going to re go over how to do that skin so next week when I start the metal bits if you guys want to do the skin and have it ready you can so we're gonna start with iron axe skin and I know this is different than the way the other video started if you made it through it long enough I eventually had to restart the way I started the skin because it just wasn't working the way we wanted it to so uh, This time I'm just going to use Iron Rack Skin as my base coat. You can see once again it's very like watery and that's what I want because I'm just, I mean you don't want bubbles but you do want it to be not thick because you're going to do probably about three coats of this because it's a very very light color over um black I mean unless you started yours white you could always start it white and then just put this iron rack flush over it's gonna be a slightly brighter tone if you do that because um obviously you're using white as your uh, base but it'll still be it'll still be very very close and similar actually it might be brighter and more pale and gross and disgusting looking you can see I'm just getting this base coat everywhere not being super careful or anything because this guy is mostly skin don't want bubbles as before nope starting to get some just going around and getting all the skin Yeah, I'm hoping I figured out most of the uh, the issues with the video. So, if anybody notices anything this time, please just go ahead and throw it in the comments. That uh, if it looks choppy or if you notice anything wrong, audio cutting out or whatever, just let me know. Um, I'm learning. I will uh, <clears throat> get all this down eventually to the point where I won't have to. It'll be like second nature and then won't be much of an issue anymore. But until I get to that point. There's gonna be little hiccups here and there. So it's just the first layer, like I said. Just getting it all over. Is that iron rack flush? first coat. Oh, he gets a little blurry when it gets too close. Alright. So you can see because we started here and we ended like over on this foot area, well we kind of came back and touched up a little bit on the back. But you can see this area is already starting to dry, so you can come back and start putting your second layer on that as soon as it starts to dry. You can already see that second layer is giving him a lot more skin tone color and less blotchiness. Like I said, the main thing is you don't want to lose details on skin because skin has whole lots of details. Especially these guys. These guys have some really gross details. 
on his back I'm going to dry brush. I normally wouldn't for this miniature, but it's how I did the obliterator, so I want you guys to see how I did that um, with the big parts on his on the obliterator's back where the guns are and stuff. You can see once again I'm not being real specific. I'm just trying to hit all the skin areas. And like I said, if it doesn't coat fully the second time, don't feel bad. Especially with this light of a color over black, you're going to need to do like two or three layers to get it up to the coat you want to. You just want to make sure your paints are thin enough that you're not destroying the uh, the um, details. You want to make sure the details stay in there. Sorry guys. Just painting. <laughs> Sometimes you zone out when you paint. A little bit more right there on that front. Tentacle arm. I'll even go over how to do a few of his details, so if you guys wanted to paint a box walker in this color, go ahead. <laughs> Alright. So there's the, uh, <clears throat> that's the uh, second layer. And you can see already a lot more of that black is now, um, disappeared but I still have it showing through in some areas like up here like right here on the torso area and like um, right here on the back of the arm and right there on the back of that arm there's still some spots showing through on the arm so you just want to hit it again with a third layer if, if it's still got black showing through or like I said, if you did white, you might already have enough coats there with two coats. But, uh, I'm going to let it dry for a second there. And once again, you can see, like I said, it dries very quickly. If you're, um, as you're going around the model, so the parts you started on should be really close to dry by the time you get done painting the whole miniature. <clears throat> so I'm going to go one more time around this guy with the iron rack. I might even go one more time because, like I said, it's a very pale color over black. And some of these areas just, they're not picking up as good as others. So it's okay. You just, as long as you're not losing your details when you layer up, just keep adding layers until you get it all covered. might actually be a pretty neat color for box walkers. I've seen them do a lot of gross colors, but I haven't seen too many in the uh, the like pale dead flesh colors. I've seen a lot of them in that like greens or like swollen pinks and peaches. Sorry guys. <laughs> Practically threw him off the floor. Threw him off the table onto the floor. One spot on the chest. I'm gonna just see if I can fall some paint in there. Just to get it to start coating that area.
Okay, so I'm going to thoroughly coat that area for a second. This is very watered down paints. Do not thoroughly coat an area with thick paints. Alright, and now the feet. And we will probably have to make one more pass. Just because, as I said, it's it's such a pale color over top of... Um, over top of black that it's just going to take a few layers to get to the where nothing is showing through you can get it all the way up into these little well, I mean, if you're painting a box walker, you can get it all the way up into these little pants leg holes. <laughs> if you're painting an obliterator, you're just trying to get everywhere that that skin's showing. Okay, so we got to let them dry again for a second. And like I said, I am going to do one more layer just to make it good and thorough, and then we'll go on to the next color. And at that point, this miniature will start moving really quick. <clears throat> I'm going to hit it with a hair dryer for a second, guys, so don't mind the noise. Just trying to make sure that neck is thoroughly dry so that it uh, put on that next layer. So this should be the last layer, and that's why I really wanted to dry it before I did this layer because I don't want any of the previous layers coming off because once you get to the last layer, you'll see it'll really make all that black disappear so long as all the previous layers are dry. I need to put more paint on my wet palette, guys. Once again, all you can see, all I'm doing is literally just moving the paint around this miniature while I go. I'm sorry if I get a little quiet here and there. I'm just getting these base layers on. And this is always kind of the boring part. I mean, I always feel like base coats are boring parts. You're not doing any detail work. You're just getting paint on the miniature. It's important and everything needs to be a thoroughly coated, but it's also the most boring part of doing any miniature, in my opinion. Some people like it. I like when you get to details and you start doing all the little crazy stuff, making everything pop. That's fun to me. Because that's when the miniature, to me, really comes alive. It's when you're doing those last little finishing details and it 
it's no longer just a few colors on a miniature now it has some actual depth and life to it you can see it's still very thin on my finger there this brush has a stray hair just does not want to get in line All right, and that's the uh, that's the base coat. So you can see it's uh, he is now thoroughly coated in the iron rack skin, and uh, that's why we did a few layers so that it he was thoroughly coated, so you could see none of the black is showing through. I'm just doing a few little spots where. I noticed on the camera it's showing through a little. All right, and that's that's your base coat. So with my base coat down, now we're going to go ahead and do our next coat, which is probably the easiest one but it's gonna once again it's gonna take a second to dry so I'm gonna have to probably hit it with the hair dryer again guys and I apologize I know that thing is noisy but um, the next color we're gonna be using is Karaberg Crimson and we're just gonna be washing this over the whole miniature you can do Druchia Violet if you want a more purpley tone the reason I'm doing this uh, Karaberg is because if you're doing that um, obliterator, which is what I'm mainly doing this for, the uh, the obliterator has spots where the skin meets metal bits, and this makes it look more aggravated and agitated, like the skin is sore. All right, so I am literally just going to take this one. and a good wash brush and just coat it in Karaberg Crimson Don't let it over pull in areas, but you do want it to, you know, pull up in the shadowy areas. Just get it everywhere on the miniature. little back leg bits. All right. Now I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes before I go ahead and hit it with the hair dryer because if you're using the hair dryer technique to dry your miniatures, whenever you it's okay with a paint to do it right after you hit it with the paint, but with a wash, you want to let the wash seep into the um into where it's supposed to and start to settle before you hit hit it with the hair dryer otherwise the hair dryer will push the wash 
and that will push it into areas you don't want it to wash so <clears throat> if that starts to happen stop using the hair dryer immediately and make sure it doesn't pull where you don't want it to you can see I'm just adjusting where any of the uh, where the wash didn't hit properly and now we will just let that dry for a second because I actually don't want for some of these areas these big areas you can actually even on the the obliterator like on the arm where the, the muscles are while this is drying you can start to take one of your detail brushes and just come back with the iron rack skin because this is our next coat and just start bringing it in because if you do this while it's still slightly wet not super wet but slightly wet it'll help the colors blend together So this is this is that iron rack skin that I based it in and I'm just uh, some of these areas that the highest areas I'm just coming back and I'm while it's still slightly damp and I'm starting to work the colors in because this will help the blend don't have to do this you can wait until it's dry if you're you're worried you're gonna mess stuff up I just do this because I want the skin to have a more natural blend And you can see I'm just doing this to my uh, my largest surface areas on his belly, which, like I said, on the obliterator will uh, be the um, the arm pieces, the uh, the bits on the back. And like I said, I will show you how to do the uh, the quick bits on the back too with the um, dry brushing. I'll do the same thing with this miniature. you can see all I'm doing is slowly building back up to that uh, that iron rack flush and letting it kind of mix with that wash to give it a um, more natural blend and same thing with the arms Little, like, I don't know what you call them, wrist bones down onto these knuckles. You can do a little bit of the wrist up here if you want, where it uh, meets those like wrist bones. This bit of muscle here, and this one here. And if you guys see, I'm just doing where it hits, where the light hits.
this belly this there's like a little spot here I just want it merged in with the rest but it just does not want to so I just will keep coming back as I'm as it dries and add a little bit more to that's all you got to do to cover an area that doesn't seem to want to get covered right away you may just have to come back and hit it a few times So as you can see, like I said, any of the muscles where the light's hitting, and this is the same thing you're going to do on that obliterator if you're doing the obliterator to catch them up. It's just anywhere the light's going to hit. And actually, you can see, because I covered that this nipple too much with the white. You can come back with a little bit of that Carabird Crimson and just bring it back in tune with the rest of the body. There you go. I hope you guys can see these. See that gut and the, the arm is pretty close with that next layer to being done. If you wonder why I do that little thing with my thumb, it's to um, make sure the paint's coming out right. It was a trick I was taught uh, by a couple painters. Um, it just makes sure that the paint is coming out the consistency you want before you put it on the miniature. And you can see, literally, I'm just... Um, <clears throat> the highest points on this guy it's these weird little tentacle arm bits same thing up the arm here just bringing that color down into where it meets everything Remember, if it starts looking too unmergy, you can always come in with some Karaberg and you can see just merge it right back in while it's still wet. See how it merged that right back into the skin tone? You can do that anywhere that you start losing it. In some of these areas you might have to come back and hit twice and like I said when I get to the back I will do it the way I did the uh, back of the obliterator with a dry brush which may not work that great on this little guy but it will at least give you an idea of how to do it for the obliterator Like I said, I'm just every little high point, and you kind of always want to take it towards the high point, so you do want to bring it like this way. That makes it more, you know, exaggerated towards the high point of the miniature. I'm just going to hit his knuckles again because it didn't hit him hard enough that first time. Now the back of the arm, this is where it gets fun. If you want to do an actual light sourcing, you don't really have to paint much of these under muscles. You just want to get the muscles that are in the light. So you can get these fingertips. If 
for the feet you're just gonna wanna like just like you did up top you're just gonna wanna hit all the high points so anywhere the uh, the wash really helps if you do the wash this is why I like washes some people are like don't use the washes uh, or don't thoroughly coat them in the wash just spot wash and I'm like yeah you can spot wash when you're done to get like your, your fine fine shadows but when you're doing your main wash just wash the whole thing because it settles in the shadows and especially for people who are beginners it's going to show you where you want to put your highlights and that's that's kind of important when you're learning it's not as important once you know what you're doing because you're going to be able to do that just naturally you start to understand where the highlights are but when you're learning a lot of the thing that you hear from beginners is how do I know where my highlights are now, the shades will a hundred percent help you know where your shadows are or your washes will 100% show you where your shadows are see like on this foot this here is gonna be highlighted this up here this bit here this back here because it's his heel But then as you start to go underneath, you don't have to do as much because that's where you're starting to hit your shadowing. Just popping up some of these little bubbles. I might add some other colors to these in a bit just to have some fun with them. Um, so there you go. And then let's hit the face real quick. Got these neck muscles. most of this back of his head up here where it's kind of lights hitting and like I said if it gets too much or you uh, don't feel like that the colors not merged anymore you can um, you can always come back with some Karaberg crimson and it will uh, it'll bring it back down into tone here watch right here's some Karaberg crimson right here to there you go. To bring the side of the head back more into it. This little jawline here. Like I said, basically anywhere the light's gonna hit. His nose, his little lip here. lower lip little chain chin chin <laughs> ears don't forget the ears and now coming around the back of the head And then these neck muscles here. Like I said, pretty much anywhere you can see where these, if you want to pop those bubbles up, you can. I'm not going to right now because I'm going to actually make them a different color, even though 
we would just on the um, if you like I said if you're doing the obliterator that's what you're gonna want to do you're gonna want to keep this all one color for this guy like I said he's uh, he's a pox walker I'm gonna do him a little differently but this is the exact skin I'm not changing any of the colors and when I add some that aren't from the obliterator or if I do I will say but I don't I don't foresee me doing that today uh, if I do the boils it's gonna be later just so people can see what they would look like or just to finish this mini because it might be a little fun to finish him but you can see I'm keeping it really watery anywhere that there's lights gonna hit that's where I'm highlighting the skin now if this were like I said if this were the obliterator and I'm not going to do this the whole time I'm just going to show you real quick with this I would take a small dry brush small D <laughs> take some of my iron rack skin and you do this with each layer on that back where the weapons are hold on guys got a little gunk in my brush that won't work Gunk in it. <laughs> okay, let's retry that. Okay. Oh. Hold on, guys. I apologize. I'm just cleaning my brush here. Okay, somebody didn't clean this brush properly last time. Um, I'm going to use a different brush real quick. Another dry brush just because it's a... Uh, I'm going to have to clean that one thoroughly and I don't want to do it while you guys are here waiting. So I'm just going to use a different dry brush real quick. Okay, so you just literally, if you're doing the back of the obliterator, you're just going to take the dry brush and it's just quick strokes. Usually, in the direction you're coming from, the light is coming from, in the direction you want it to be highlighted from. So, this guy, it's from like the top and the sides down, so you would literally just do this. You can even see it's starting to do it on the paints. <laughs> But yeah, you just that's all you're gonna do. Up and down on the those big weapons. And usually they will come out looking really good. But like I said, that's a little little much for this miniature. He's he's tiny to begin with. He doesn't need that's like overkill. <laughs> so I'm gonna just uh, touch up some of these spots that we have the iron rack skin on. But that's how you would do the uh, the dry brushing where need be. You can see once again though I'm just where the where the flesh hits the light. That's where I'm gonna and I am gonna do the boils on the skin just so you guys can see the difference in the colors because I don't want to do them white and you guys not be able to actually see the difference in the um the skin and the boils. Actually if I really really bring them up a different peachy white I might be able to still keep them in the white range we'll see all right 
<clears throat> so your next color, Fort Euro Obliterator skin, is going to be Dick and Flesh. You can use other, these are just my recommendations, they come out looking really fun and gross. You can obviously use white whites if you want, or you can use like Kislev, um, Kislev Flesh, um, Ushapti, do it that way if you want a more warm tone. I'm doing this because I want a very, very um, pale tone. So now, with the Deepkin Flesh, I'm going to start highlighting in any of the areas that are all in the light. And this is a much brighter white so like I said make sure you're watery so when you're you're merging these they merge they're not just um, you don't want to go harshly from one color to another the objective is to kind of keep it um so that the colors kind of uh, walk into each other So you don't have any of those big, harsh lines, is basically what I'm trying to say. That's this deep kin flesh, like I said, you're just going to want it where the highest points are. So up on this elbow here, on these wrist bone spots, right here where those two joints meet. Up here on this elbow, down on these knuckles, the belly is really going to be the hardest part because you want to make sure it's going to take one or two passes to really bring out the the details in the gut without a. Uh, like I said, you don't want to make it look like it's just a color into another color. You want them to walk into each other. So it looks like natural skin tone. And I'm just literally going to hit these highest points. And if you get too away from yourself again, you can again use the Caribou Crimson and force the color down. So back into the skin tone. If you uh, if you notice you put a line in and it just pops too much or it drowns out the previous color and you don't like it. That's okay. It can be fixed. You just go back with a little Karaberg and boom, fix it up. Anywhere, just like with the obliterator, anywhere that the skin is popping open, you want to give it that little sharp edge highlight right where the skin breaks through. I don't have to do this everywhere, obviously, because you don't want to um, lose the shadowing you've created. So once again, you're you're just wanting to do this to your your highest areas. 
as you see I'm just going back to the areas we've already highlighted with the other color and I'm just bringing it up one tiny bit where the, the skin's at the highest meeting of the light. I'm going to get these little neck bits. This little cheek again. Right at the center of the chin. <coughs> Jawbone, the ears. Ears. Jawbone. Nope, that job range just does not want to pop as much as the other one. There we go. And then this little itty bitty lip line. His eyebrows. Nose ridge. Now I can come up here and I can get a little bit of this how these called a brow ridge line you kind of bring it back and once again I'll take pictures of this guy like I always do with the other guys so he'll be the cover photo and you'll be able to see what the uh, how bright this skin is when it or what it really looks like because I know it looks a little just white on camera but it is not just white all right so there's the oh, see and this is what you if you overdo it like I said you can just bring it back in with your this is taking some iron rack to bring that that ridge line a little bit back into into the way it was before. There we go. Just want to trying to merge it a little bit more so that it has that very clean merge on the face. It's got the stretch skin here. All right. So that's the, oh, hold on, got to get the pizzas too. <laughs> so this is the, um, the deepkin flesh. And really there's only one more layer and then that'll be it for the obliterator skin. And then I will make the, um, pop, the pox marks pop a little bit so you guys can see the skin a little better. And like I said, if you lose any of the details, it's okay. You can just come back with some Karaberg and bring them back. See, I lost some of the details inside the toes. So I'm just taking a little bit of Karaberg Crimson and working it all the way around to make the toes look more natural. There we go. Now I do the same thing with the other foot. So the other foot's got this little bit in the light. Right here. Nope, a little bit more. A 
taking some care of bird because it lost some of it back there in that main portion of the foot. I'll bring the deep can right back in. And now on the other side of this foot, you're just going to here where it's got this ridge here and up here. And on the bottom there. And on the back of this heel. Like I said, with the obliterator, you're pretty much just doing the same thing. Only the high points. Making sure to leave all the deep recesses. Those, uh, that reddish. That, that uh, Karaberg Crimson, because it'll give it that look of, um, painful skin. All right, so now we're down to our last layer, guys. Dog hair. <laughs> so the last layer of the skin is going to be Ballad Witch Flush. I think I showed Deep Kin Flush last time, but if I didn't. Pallid Witch Flesh is your last color. This is still the uh, Deepkin, guys. I'm just bringing a little more up into the chest because I realized there was a spot I missed there. There we go. Yeah, if you notice you missed a spot, just touch it up. It's no biggie. Alright, so now we're coming back with the Pallid Witch Flush, which is pretty much close to a white. So once again, you're going to want to make sure it's very, very watery, translucent. Like I said, milk is a good description. You want it kind of the consistency of milk, not water. A little, little thicker than water. And you can see, guys, I'm once again just hitting the spots that are going to be the highest spots. on the miniature. With this palette, like I said, you want to really make sure you're only hitting your high points. because you don't need this one everywhere and you'll see once I move on to the other areas of the flesh I'm going to even um, turn it down a little more right now I'm coming back this is a iron rack to blend it a little bit an iron rack glaze to blend it a little bit and then just bring in a little bit more palette back into those high spots all 
all right and now coming up into the chest area it's once again just going to be right around this nipple area You can see I'm being very careful not to drown out my previous colors. I'm literally just very carefully placing these highlights so that my other colors still exist. this arm bit here you just up in this like I said where the the high point the elbow is and down here where the two bits meet um, these two little edges of the wrist bones the high point on the hand you can add a little touch just to give it some color down onto these knuckles and you can see from underneath the belly's got a little bit of a an uneven coating where the skin meets so I'm just going to take some iron rack and literally just pull that color on the belly alrighty and now uh Palette witch flesh, you're still gonna be getting these uh these high points, so up here on this elbow. Down here where this little bit is like coming up towards the wrist. You can see I accidentally connected them. You can disconnect them with a little bit of Carabird Crimson. Just on these high points of the skin. in this neck up here all right over onto the other arm got these little tentacle bits right where this arm merges Anywhere that, the, like I said, anywhere it's a high point. I'm gonna want to once again hit that ridge of the lip, on both the top and bottom. Get a little bit onto the chin, over these brow ridge, cause or uh, eyebrows, brow ridge, whatever. A little bit on the cheekbone, a little bit on the jaw, a little bit on the jaw over here. Ears. Anywhere where it meets anything. Gonna be a little bit here in the head, but this is gonna have to. You're gonna have to like put your point where you want your pallid witch flesh on the top of the head. Like for me, it's right there. 
and then you're going to want to come back with your deepkin flesh, the, or, uh, yeah, deepkin flesh, the last color, and just clean up your edges slightly. Now do the same thing on the back. So he's got this spot here that hits real hard in the light. Up here hits real hard in the light. Like I said, if you overdo it, it's okay because you can just come back with the either deep kin or iron rack, whichever one is going to help you merge it more with that last color. And just bring it back in. bit there there's a little bit on his arm up here up here where the arm comes in on this arm up here on the top of this thing these these gross little pock marks Basically anywhere you had highlighted before, you're just going to come back and just ultra highlight it with the palette. And once that's done, that is it guys for the, uh, for the obliterator flesh. I'm going to do this one step farther. I'm going to take this and do the, um, the pock marks as well. That is not a step for the obliterators. So if you're doing the obliterator just to walk along with the obliterator, um, you could stop this video now or just watch because you want to see how the pockmarks are made. This is the last little bit of highlighting on the foot. You can see there he's uh, very gross and pale. He looks even better in person. You'll see in the pics when the uh, when I put the pick up. Well, you'll know beforehand because that pick will be the cover photo. And that's it for the obliterate flush. Literally, it's just that simple. Um, so, for the um, pock marks, I'm going to add Carabird Crimson, color we had before. This time I'm using um, my. Uh, same brush I've been using to detail because I want to control the wash this time. This is just re-edging around these pock marks, the most severe of them. If you ever do it, you can always come back and hit it a little bit with your other colors and bring it right back in, as we've done before. Like I said, with this, you would just, this is not going to be on the obliterator, but for this guy, if you're doing this guy and you wanted to finish painting him,
I'm just re-highlighting all those pock marks. Or reshadowing, not re-highlighting. This is just the Caraberg Crimson being dragged into the creases. All right, now I'm gonna for these pock marks. And take a corn red. And just put a little dot on all of them. Actually, hold on, that's not a that's not a good one to use. I apologize, don't use that. <laughs> Actually, it might just be better to come back and hit them with the white again. I just gotta touch those up, guys. Instead, Take a Kislev flesh or screaming skull. This is screaming skull. Just put a little bit at the top of each. Pock mark. And if you overdo it, just like before, you can just take the Caribou Crimson. And that'll go right back into the recesses. That one just does not want to go. Try and get that little sucker again. There we go. Right now I'm actually using the um the iron rack skin again because it blends so well with the rest of the skin. But yeah, you can do these pock marks any colors you want. Just gonna make them stand out.
All right, but that's all you got to do. Actually, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna take those, put a little white dot on the top of all of them. I think that'll look great, even without doing another color. So you're just going to want to keep moving the paint around those areas. And like I said, I wouldn't do those pox marks a different color, but I'm trying to show you how to do the obliterator skin. So that is pretty much it for the obliterator skin. Oop, let me do those little pock marks on his head to at least make them stand out. Um, and you can see I'm just literally highlighting some of these highest points and that's it guys it's uh that's how you would do the obliterator flesh um so if <laughs> if you're trying to follow along with that obliterator this is how you do the flesh color for it i'm going to call this video 1.5 for the obliterator even though it's a pox walker but this is the skin tone you want to achieve um i'm going to take a picture of it put it up but thank you for joining me today, and if you liked the video, please like and share, and subscribe, and have a good one, everyone. Bye.